How long did the patient take to recover the normal sensorium and neurological function? <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm present on behalf of Medicine 2. Uh, this is a 20 year old gentleman who are, uh, from Vellore who had uh, initially present with the uh, tonic chronic movements of bilateral lower limb with uprolling of the eyes, three episode at home in the morning, where uh, uh, followed by post uh, confusion for past three minutes. There was no associated tongue bite, urinary fecal incontinence, no associated headache, blood vision, or uh, recent trauma or any fever prior to it. He was initially taken. Initially taken to the uh, outside hospital within an hour, where they have given him with the IV and uh, administered an IV antiplatelets, and was referred to a secondary center. Uh, within six hours, he was uh, referred to a secondary center where he was again loaded with the IV uh, uh, antiepileptics, and he was discharged on oral uh, medications at home. Uh, after coming home, uh, within another three hours, he developed one more episode of seizure, following which he was taken to a tertiary center. Uh, where again uh, he was given IV antiplex and there he was noticed to have a uh, he had walked into the secondary center however he was noticed to uh, after the administration of uh, the medication he was noticed to have not able to get up from the bed or able to walk and he was uh, swaying to both sides there was no history of any similar uh, events in the past was no significant family history uh, well, when the medical team was seeing the patient, the vital signs were stable. His uh, sensorium was, he was oriented and uh, conscious. The random blood sugar done was uh, normal, 98. Uh, CNS examination uh, showed pupils were reactive and equal. Fundus examination was normal. Uh, he had uh, clinically resting nystagmus horizontally and also by ataxia to both sides with uh, coordination def defects like dysmetria. However, all others... Uh, uh, system examination was normal. So now we have a 20 year old gentleman who had initially presented with uh, tonic, generalized tonic clonic seizure, uh, thrice acutely managed with anti epileptics. Now we are present with a gait disturbance and cerebellar signs. So uh, if uh, everyone can um, put into the same slido, uh, the code is 2753028 for the differentials of the same. Okay, uh, most of our uh, answers of intoxicity, vernicus and kephalopathy, and uh, well, rather anti-epileptic toxicity. Um, coming to our patient, yeah. Uh, so the initial uh, uh, differentials we consider either a, uh, someone has come with a seizure with an acute cerebellar signs, uh, a vascular pathology like a posterior circulation stroke, brain some involvement. Uh, however, he was a young age with no other uh, risk factors, any subdural hemorrhage, otherwise uh, to uh, toxic, uh, any other intoxication like a finto intoxicity, alcohol or bar barbiturates, but no history of any prior alcohol intake or any bar uh, barbiturate uh, intake. However, there were three uh, history of administration of IV epileptics. Uh, viral cerebellate is down the list, but there was no history of any fever. Uh, so now we have a person with seizure and uh, uh, acute uh, cerebellar signs. For the seizure part, we have done a metabolic workup, uh, minimal metabolic workup due to financial concern. All of the metabolic workup is normal. We have done a CSF analysis to roll out an infection or autoimmune pathology. Uh, the protein levels are normal and infection workup is negative. MRI also was done, which did not show any uh, uh, structural cause for the seizure. For the acute uh, 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 ataxia and nystagmus, uh, we wanted to roll out a structural cause, mainly a posterior circulation event. MRI uh, and MRI did not show any features of uh, any posterior involvement or uh, uh, even like a CVT. 
Now an EEG for the seizure showed a generalized epile uh, epileptic form waves. Now we went back and reviewed the drug history. Initial uh, hospital visit, he was given a 600 mg IV fentanyl in the primary center. Within six hours into the referral center, he was given 900 mg of IV fentanyl. Uh, went home, developed one more episode of seizure, went to a tertiary center where he was loaded with 1350 mg of IV fentanyl again. For, so within less than 24 hours, this patient was given 2850 milligrams of IV fentanyl, following which he developed uh, acute signs of ataxia and nystagmus. And we had ruled out a vascular and structural cause of the same. Uh, so we conclude it to be a clinically an adult onset seizure with an acute fentanyl toxicity. Uh, this, uh, when the patient developed ataxia itself, uh, if you look at Harrison's uh, the uh, table on ataxia, the first cause in uh, for an acute ataxia itself uh, includes intoxication secondary to fentanyl. Even in a uh, chronic ataxia, fentanyl is uh, told to be one of the causes. Uh, so, uh, just a few slides on acute fentoin toxicity. Uh, fentoin, uh, why it is uh, so notorious in causing uh, 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 side effects? One, uh, basically, it's a voltage dependent sodium channel uh, blocker, which is mainly found in uh, uh, nerves and cardiac tissue. So, the main uh, clinical symptoms that can cause is either a CNS in, uh, manifestation like a uh, uh, posterior syndrome or it can be like a cardiac uh, event like an arrhythmia or a heart block. Uh, usually, it's a very protein-bound uh, molecule uh, with a very na narrow therapeutic index. However, the inter-individual variability is significant. In, uh, um, uh, patients can present with the, a wide variety of uh, clinical events in the same patient. There was, uh, however, the uh, fatalities or a serious adverse event related to acute fentanyl toxicity is very rare. Uh, why this is uh, known to cause a toxicity? Two uh, points in pharmacology. One, because it's easily displaced from the protein bound state by many drugs. And at, uh, at a higher concentration in the serum, due to the protein gets saturated fast and it's freely, uh, the free uh, uh, fintoin levels increases in the serum uh, uh, fast. And the second one is at a higher concentration, uh, cyclone P450. Uh, become saturated, uh, making it uh, from a first-order uh, kinetics to a zero-order kinetics, which causes a, a constant amount of uh, drug being eliminated, leading to a prolonged half-life. Uh, usual drugs which can displace the fintoin uh, from the uh, album state or uh, cause decreased metabolism that we use is valproate, warfarin, isoanisate, carbonsipin, uh, which can lead to a, a fintoin toxicity in a uh, fintoin patient. And drugs which can cause a subtherapeutic fintoin levels in patients are uh, folic acid and uh, steroids like dexamethasone. Uh, most common causes and differential, this was a, a study done in Taiwan, uh, which has said uh, the most common cause for uh, uh, acute fintoin toxicity was uh, excessive self-medication and almost 14%, uh, uh, 10 to 14% was hydrogenic in uh, that study also, like in our uh, uh, patient. And most common presentation was either a, uh, sorry, uh, most uh, uh, initial diagnosis at the emergency department was uh, fintoin toxicity itself in 66% uh, compared to brain stem stroke or a cerebellar stroke uh, almost in 33%. percent was misdiagnosed as an initial event. Uh, clinical symptoms, uh, there's two studies, one from China and one from Taiwan, which had showed almost uh, 60 to 80% of them presented with the unsteady gait and uh, uh, nystagmus and vertigo like in our patient. Uh, Clinically, if you want to uh, assess the uh, uh, serum con concentration, uh, usually therapeutic range is around 10 to 20 milligram per liter. However, nystagmus and ataxia develops uh, from 20 to 40. Once it's more than 50, patient can even present in severe confusion and coma. In our patient, we are considering most probably the level will be between 20 to 40 milligram per liter. Uh, overall evaluation and management, usually it, it can be a very clinical diagnosis, which can be confirmed with the fintoin concentration uh, serum level. Serum albumin is uh, important because once uh, there's a low serum albumin, the chance of a person getting a higher uh, serum concentration fintoin is high because it's a protein bound uh, molecule. Liver function test because in a uh, liver dysfunction, uh, patient with liver dysfunction, the chance of fintoin toxicity is more if it's a chronic uh, a patient who is on a long term fintoin. Uh, ECG and other cardiac evaluation because it can uh, it's known to cause a cardiac arrhythmia, uh, 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 heart blocks, uh, and uh, cardiac arrhythmia mainly a bradyarrhythmia, and other causes can be rolled out with the brain imaging. 
management wise there is no antidote uh, present uh, till now for uh, fintoin toxicity however just a supportive management by stopping the drug if needed we can uh, replace it with benzodiazepine or barbiturate uh, if uh, all the case studies that are showed patient with uh, hypertension that is less than 1% was treated with just isotonic saline and bradyarrhythmias were given atropine if it was a symptomatic bradyarrhythmia uh activated charcoal was given uh, shown benefit in oral uh, intake of fintoin in in patients who had a uh, uh, deliberate suffer active overdose on a patient who has already been on uh, uh, fintoin for a long time one uh, formula i just want to inform if someone had come with a low uh, or a patient on liver dysfunction uh, the corrected uh, fintoin level we can calculate by, with the sheena toza formula where the fintoin into 0.2 into albumin plus 0.1 can give the actual fintoin concentration which can be uh, used to uh, uh, either assess uh, the uh, level of toxicity so in our patient we had stopped the fintoin he was admitted for observation and within 12 hours of admission from ed to a ward the symptoms had completely resolved patient had little educated of the drug uh seizure evaluation wise we did the baseline infectious metabolic and structural workup which was negative uh, eeg had showed a epileptiform wave so we had started him on levetiracetam and he was seizure free uh, we did not send a fintoin level in this patient because clinically he had a strong history of uh, uh, acute high dose of uh, iv fintoin given thrice within 24 hours developed the uh, typical common most common feature of a fintoin toxicity which had resolved after stopping the drug within 24 hours by the time he had come to the ward Hence, we treated him as a, a clinical case of fintoin toxicity. Uh, my take-home message will be: uh, want to have acute fintoin toxicity overview, how they present, and what is the most common symptoms. And uh, one more thing: it's not a, a very uh, uh, even though the fintoin toxic acute fintoin toxicity is common in a clinical setting. However, the mortality and uh, adverse events related to it is less than one percent according to all the studies. All of them had a record with just supportive care. and second thing the importance of a drug history in a acute care setting if uh, one of the hospital have taken a uh, uh, drug, previous drug history we could have avoided the uh, iv administration of this antiepileptics so uh, could you emphasize uh, how this could have been prevented you know the dosing i think you need to emphasize that uh, the uh, first uh, usually we give just tell us uh, how iv phenytoin should be administered and what was the error Yeah. Uh, the usual dose uh, for an acute event in IV admission is 15 to 20 mg per kg. Uh, the initial uh, uh, hospital has given a 600 mg. After which he shouldn't have actually given a, a second dose because they have given a weight based uh, uh, fintoin. Second uh, hospital has given a standard dose of uh, IV, which is a 900 mg per kg for a 60 kg man. They have given a second dose and the Uh, tertiary centers give an even higher dose without taking a prior history so we, so could have we gave another dose is it here in the casualty yes, sir after which he had actually walked in normally got it then he developed the sign then uh, medicine <coughs> team was informed so we had picked up the toxicity level actually so the take home message would be a, a better patient who comes with a history of seizure with ataxia always take a history of phenytoin Uh, administration of phenytoin and do not give further phenytoin thank you